This is section 4.6, which is graphs of composite trigonometric functions. We're going to talk about combining trig and algebraic functions, sums and differences of sinusoids, and damped oscillation. Okay, so example one is combining the cosine function with x squared. So if we were to graph y equals cosine of x squared, and then state whether the function appears to be periodic. So this graph below is what we get if we graph y equals cosine of x squared. So we would say yes, it appears to be periodic. Now if we look at y equals cosine of x squared, um, we can see from the graph down below here that this is not periodic. So um, we can say no, not periodic. And we can tell that because you can see in the middle it's spaced out, then the waves get closer and closer together. So we want something like the previous one where it's a continuous, we can say at this point and to this point is the same distance as this point. That's how we're determining if it's periodic or not. Okay, our next example, adding a sinusoid to a linear function. So if we have f of x equals cosine of x minus x over 3, and then we're stating the domain and range. So if you look here, um, we can see that this is a different type of graph. We're not typically used to looking at stuff like this. Okay, um, but then we want to state the domain and range. So if we look at this, our domain. So you can see that this is going to keep going to the left and this direction is going to keep going to the right. So that means our domain would be negative infinity to positive infinity. And then our range, if you look, this is going to continue to go up and this is going to continue to go up. But then because of that cosine piece, it's going to, it's like a wave within these restrictions. So it's going to keep getting bigger and smaller and bigger and smaller. So our range is actually going to be negative infinity to infinity as well. Okay, so sums that are sinusoids, sums that are sinusoids functions. So if we have one function y1, and another function, y2. If we add them together, okay, the sinusoid has a period of 2 pi over b. So you'll notice the b value is going to need to be the same in both of these functions. So when we look at the examples, that b value is going to help us determine the period. So our first example, or this is, we have two examples of this, so it says identifying a sinusoid. So determine whether the following function is or is not a sinusoid. So if we look at this, what we're focusing on is these two functions. So for this one, we would say yes, because you can see this is just cosine of x and this is just sine of x. They both have a period of 2 pi. So because they both have the same period, we can say, yes, this is a sinusoid, okay? Then, but down below here, we have cosine of 3x and sine of 5x. So this one would be no, because cosine of 3x is going to have a period of 2 pi over 3, and sine of 5x is going to have a period of 2 pi over 5. So because those two functions within the sum have different periods, we say it's not a sinusoid. Okay, the last thing that we're going to talk about for this section is damped oscillation. So the graph of f of x cosine, b, cosine of bx or y equals f of x sine of bx oscillates between the graph y equals f of x and y equals negative f of x. So when this reduces the amplitude of the wave, it's called damped oscillation, and the factor f of x is called the damping factor. So you can see, so what I graphed down here, so x over 2, so f of x equals x over 2, that would be my um, damping factor in this. And you can see, so if you visualize on the graph here, you can actually imagine the line um, 1 half x, or x over 2, and then the opposite of that, negative x over 2. So you can kind of see that and how that creates 
the damped oscillation for the graph of cosine of 2x. Okay, let me know if there's any